Peru's media has labelled him an incendiary gringo priest, but a 62-year-old British missionary has become an unlikely hero amongst the tribes of the Amazon. Brother Paul McCauley from Portsmouth has lived in the Peruvian jungle for a decade. The authorities say they want to deport him for provoking civil unrest amongst indigenous tribes. He says he helps the people fight for their rights against oil companies exploring the rainforest. The Amazon basin stretches for 1.7 billion acres across nine South American countries. Brazil is home to the biggest slice, followed by Peru. Its jungle, capital Iquitos, is so remote it can only be reached by plane or riverboat. Our foreign affairs correspondent Jonathan Rugman travelled there and then up the river Tigre to meet Brother Paul and the native Peruvian tribes who have turned to him for help. This report does contain some disturbing images. Um, this, this builds me up. When I come here in the morning, I, I feel buoyed up. Um, He's a 62-year-old missionary all the way from Portsmouth called so Brother Paul the, McCauley. Uh, and amid the indigenous tribes of Peru, Brother Paul is a hero. Paul, amigo, el pueblo está contigo. Paul, our brother, the people are with you, they cry. The missionary making such a nuisance of himself in his campaign for tribal rights that the Peruvian government has ordered his expulsion. Do you think you will get thrown out? If I have to go, I'll get carried out. I won't resist because I respect Peruvian law, but I won't have the energy to take any steps to walk. That would be to be a traitor to these people. For the last decade, the Amazon rainforest has been Brother Paul's home, a maze of muddy rivers meandering across the ecological wonder of the world. It's a land of remote Indian tribes, victims, says Brother Paul, of a land grab by multinational oil companies and the Peruvian state. It seems hard to believe because it's so fast. But oil and gas exploration licenses have been sold off to 97% of the Amazon forest below me. Now that should make Peru rich. The question is, at what cost? My pilot spots our destination and we prepare to land. Gliding in over the river Tigre, close to Peru's border with Ecuador, in what looks like a paradise that time forgot. There's a welcoming party in the jungle. Native Indians living without roads or electricity, harvesting plantains or hunting the forest for deer and wild boar. And among them are two members of the Quechua people, whose cause has been adopted by Brother Paul. Julia Chuhe says that seven of her children died after an oil company polluted the Tigre River. They died by vomiting, just like that. They threw up a lot. First, we thought it was the witches. We took them to other villages, and there they died, vomiting blood. It was all about the oil. Her surviving son, Jose, is beside her. Brother Paul helped get him out of jail, where he says he was tortured for protesting against the oil companies and the abuse of native human rights. I asked Paul to come so he could see and tell people about the way things are. And he came, and people started to believe. They realized we have the right to fight against pollution, against poverty, and for our way of life. We head back to the provincial capital, Iquitos, to meet the man many Amazonian Indians are turning to for help. 97% of our region is already under exploration or exploitation. And then In his map room, Paul McCauley shows me how energy companies are carving up the Amazon with plans to export hundreds of millions of barrels of oil. But what of the Indians who live in the forest? They've been informed that the petrol company are coming in, but they haven't been consulted. And that's where the weakness is in the dealings with the government and the petrol companies. It was brother Paul who filmed these pictures of the river Tigre, blackened by oil, and he's asked for an official investigation. 
and it was Brother Paul who obtained this chilling video of a man apparently tortured and killed after demonstrating for native rights. The death of the native has never been investigated. We've now going on now two years and we know nothing about how he died. The Peruvian press has called him a white terrorist and an incendiary gringo priest. But amid the ten Indian tribes he is educating in peaceful resistance, he's an inspiration. The state has forgotten us. In my village, we don't even know who the president is. We're very thankful for the foreign brother who feels for us. That's why we're going to support him with all we have. Last week, the missionary became front page news. The Peruvian government said he had breached public order and acted against the state and that it was expelling him as a result. We're the only group that really permanently works on environmental education and the human rights of the natives in the middle of the forest. And it seems that because we're well received by people, because they know that we're playing a very balanced role, it seems that authorities don't like that. This is what makes the authorities nervous. Last year, hundreds left the Amazon to join demonstrations in the mountains, which officially left 24 policemen and 11 protesters dead. Though indigenous groups say hundreds of civilians were killed. Listen, they chanted in a message to Peru's president, the jungle is not for sale. Last week, they were protesting again this time against the expulsion of Brother Paul, who could barely leave his house without cameras following him and locals offering their support. Uh, the missionary's been awarded an MBE by the Queen for services to Peruvian education. What have you done with it? I gave it away, actually. I gave the medal to somebody, who, in a group in Spain who were helping us. The medal doesn't impress the regional governor either, who says it's time for the brother to go. I can say from personal experience that he sometimes spoke very badly about our authorities, saying they were incompetent or not intelligent, or saying many times that we had sold out to American capitalism. Isn't Brother Paul's only crime that he's encouraging the Indians to stand up for themselves? It's not that. Maybe he has had a role in making people conscious about their rights, mostly people who have less. But 10 years in that mission is enough time to let people speak without his help. The Catholic Church has paid for good lawyers, and yesterday a judge ordered Peru's interior ministry not to deport the missionary though the battle continues through the courts. I feel that we've got nature on our side, and I'm sure the spirits of the, the jungle is, is now with us, and we're at a crunch point, really, a meeting of, of two worlds. He's an unorthodox Catholic. Three times he has drunk ayahuasca, the psychedelic vine juice, which Indians take to see into the future. The last time he drank it, he felt the roots of plants growing out from his back. The trees started to caress my arms. And I felt totally part of, of, of nature. Um, and I took that as a sort of a, a confirmation of what I think what we're doing here. So has the missionary gone native? Well, yes. But out on the river, the endangered home of remote Indian tribes, it's that kind of thinking which makes people love Brother Paul. Jonathan Rugman, Channel 4 News, in the Peruvian Amazon. When we come back, Ken Clark on why prison doesn't work and lacrosse isn't coming home. Why the Native American tribe who invented the game can't get to Manchester where this year's World Championships start tomorrow. <laughs>